Fired throughout the world, a safe haven where progressive liberal politics have created an apparent democratic utopia. But is that really the case? A documentary made by The Telegraph, which examines Canada and its approach to issues such as gender ideology, the legalization of drugs and laws on suicide, has already been viewed over four million times. Let's take a look. Canada was a very stable, middle class country with reliable institutions. To say that's gone is to say almost nothing. Canada. Under Justin Trudeau, the former British colony has sought to position itself as the global bastion of progressive politics. We have become a totalitarian state. So the documentary is called Canada's Woke Nightmare, A Warning to the West. It was made by Stephen Edgington and Alexander McCarran. And Stephen joins me now. Welcome to the show. So, Congratulations on the documentary. Over four million views already. How long has it been out? About two weeks. That's not bad going. Not that's, bad. That's pretty good. Now, I noticed Jordan Peterson there talking about how Canada has fallen. I've spoken to him about that very topic as well. It feels as though this has all happened very, very quickly. What, was, what are the worst aspects that you have uncovered while working on the film? Well, as you mentioned, we looked into a variety of different issues facing Canada in recent years. And you could go back decades, and if you want, we can talk about the history of where this all comes from as well. But yes. in particular, the worst things that are facing Canada at the moment are they've legalised uh, hard drugs in places like Vancouver. So we went to Vancouver and they've legalised heroin, cocaine, fentanyl in small doses if, if you um, sort of possess them. Yes. And there's a huge amount of rise in homelessness and violent crime. If you walk around the streets of Vancouver, you'll see huge amounts of sort of homeless encampments and things like that, similar to going to places like San Francisco or Seattle in America. So it's almost like a test case because people who are for the sort of complete legalization of drugs will say that you would have a kind of situation uh, where it would be kind of the gangsters would be out of the picture. People would be, it would be more moderate. It would work. Well, it doesn't they've, work. They've seen a huge rise, as I say, right. in violent crime and homelessness and in drug overdoses. And what you have is these huge NGOs will go to Vancouver and they'll make vast amount of money trying to supposedly help these people. But in fact, they're sort of affirming their drug addiction by handing out needles and handing out money to these people. So it's right. a huge problem. So a lot of people will say and have noted that the uh, Canada's government has effectively been kind of captured uh, by an ideology or at least is trying to promote a particular ideology. And this has particular ramifications for free speech, doesn't it? Absolutely. And you can see there's so many different cases and we explored some of those cases of individuals who are facing losing their jobs and livelihoods because they support certain political um, positions. So yeah. I'll give you an example. We spoke to a nurse called Amy Ham, who has been a nurse for over 10 years. She's never had any complaints against her until recently. She was supporting J.K. Rowling. She put up or was involved in a sort of billboard that supported that said, I heart J.K. Rowling. And right. she's a kind of quite positive message. <laughs> would have thought. And obviously, she's a gender critical person. She's written blogs and things like this about it. Yes. And two members of the public complained to her nursing board in British Columbia. And now she faces losing her nursing license. So she's a single mother with two children. And she's facing losing her entire livelihood because of her political beliefs, which I think are shared by many people, probably in Canada and around the world. And we hear that kind of thing happening over here every now and then. Uh, thankfully, we've got groups like the Free Speech Union who step in and normally resolve these matters. But in Canada, it's coming from the government itself. That's the difference here, isn't it? Well, in Canada, the opposition party, the Conservative Party, has been fairly weak on lots of these issues, particularly on trans rights and gender ideology. So the Conservatives here, at least some of the ministers may say some platitudes or have some rhetoric in support of gender critical beliefs. But in Canada, the Conservative Party has really been weak on this issue. Their new leader, Pierre Polyev, has really tried to avoid this issue, this issue at all costs. I think all Conservative MPs in the 